what are what are one's rights if you're approached by ASIO or for that matter other security agencies like the equivalent state equivalents of a special branch or mm. the Australian Federal Police um, what are your rights in terms of uh, uh, you know having to speak to them or give them any information? Well, in regards to the police, uh, either New South Wales Police or, or the Australian Federal Police, um, the universal advice given by lawyers is um, just don't talk to them unless you speak to a lawyer first or unless a lawyer is with you. And the reason is because um, the police are not really interested in collecting information in order to understand the world. What they're interested in is collecting evidence in order to bring a prosecution case um, either against you or one of your friends. So, um, so, so the, the advice that's given by all lawyers is that if you are approached by the police, um, uh, at most, um, get a business card off them, say thank you very much, um, but you don't have it have anything to say, um, because there's nothing you could tell them that would um, help you in any way. The only thing that you might do is that you might accidentally incriminate yourself or you might give them information or intelligence or most people would call it gossip um, about about some of your friends and some of your activists. So there's just um, no, no point to engaging with the police at all. Do any of these police agencies have special powers to compel you to uh, give them information under any circumstances? Um, no, pretty much. Um, uh, with uh, ASIO, the position is slightly different. The general position is still the same. If you're approached by ASIO and you're asked for a chat to help them better understand things, or they want to take you for a coffee or a tea, or they come to your home, you can simply say that you don't want to talk to them, please go away. And that should be enough for them just to leave you alone and for them to go away. Um, there is an exception to that, and that is in relation to very serious issues dealing with terrorism, where there's something called a questioning warrant, um, and there's also a detention warrant. Um, these are special powers that ASIO uh, were given by the government. Um, they've only been used against members of the Tamil and the Middle Eastern communities. Um, um, and if that happens, there'll be lots of paperwork. Um, they'll come from the Australian. Fe they'll come with the Australian Federal Police. They won't ask you for a chat. They will simply arrest you, take you to a location, um, and then there are certain legal obligations which kick in then. But um, but for ordinary protesters, um, um, if ASIO or the police turn up, simply say you don't want to talk to them um, and close the door or hang up the phone, and that should be enough to deal with them. The only other thing I would add to that is, is um, some people feel a bit embarrassed if they're approached by the police or ASIO in this way. They say, well, why, why me? Why have they approached me? Um, do they think I'm the sort of person that would inform on my friends or something like that? And that's a very normal reaction. But I think the thing to do is to, is to go beyond that and to tell your fellow activists that you have been approached. Um, tell them how you were approached and some of the things that they said. And by doing that, um, it helps to get rid of the mystery and the secrecy surrounding intelligence agencies and, and ASIO. Because what their job is essentially to do is to collect gossip and in order to neutralize activist and protest movements. So it's, it's good we know that they're around and it's good that we know that we don't have to talk to them. Um, and ultimately they're not going to get in the way of, of stopping activists um, from doing what they want to do. Do you know of any cases where uh, police or other security agencies have used um, the, uh, the uh, information from uh, conversations, informal interviews of this character to either compromise the interviewee or, or, or associates or fellow activists? Um, yes, it's fairly easy to do, and that is um, what happens is that, um, say, a police officer uh, will have a chat with you over coffee, and then when the police officer wants to meet up with you the second occasion, they say, ah, but you met us before. Uh, what would your comrades think if people knew you had been meeting police in the past? So, um, so that's one of the tactics that they use. Another tactic that they sometimes use 
is that if someone is facing a criminal charge, they'll say to that person, well, if you help us with this, we can help you with the criminal charge. Now, that may not even be true, but that's some of the things that they will say um, in order to get people to cooperate. I think generally they want people to cooperate voluntarily, and they will be nice to get people to cooperate. Um, but if push comes to shove, they have a job to do, and, and they do threaten people. Um, in a gentle way, but they will try to threaten people in this way in order to get to them to cooperate. And so that's why the safest thing to do is right at the beginning to say, nothing to say, um, please go away, tell your fellow activists about the approach, and then everything's out in the open and, and there's not really much more that, that ASIA or the police can do.